This is Let's Talk Business with your hosts, Mark Ebinger and Heather Bain. Now, here's Mark. Welcome to Let's Talk Business, a show that highlights some of the best businesses in the San Antonio area. Coming up on the show today, we're going to talk with Imad Gerges, the owner of Simply Bookkeeping, who specializes in bookkeeping and financial analysis for businesses. Imad, welcome back to the show. Awesome. Thanks, Mark, for having me. You bet, buddy. We're also going to, by the way, I hear you're using video clips from this show to great effect on your social media. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's been great. Yeah. Instagram, YouTube. Growing and growing. Life changing. The, the, those video clips do well. Are you guys using them for reels and feeds and all? Absolutely. And the stories? reels are really good on Instagram as well. Don't forget stories because you can oh, yeah. cl- Stories, I guess, are back to where they'll do uh, 60 seconds now. Mm. And I like that you can immediately see the effect of it. You know, it's not just put it out there and you'll get some views. You can see immediately, like I have this many views on this, this clip. So you can really tailor it quickly. You get that feedback. Exactly. Yep. It's been great. We're also going to talk with Howie Nestel, the president of Sharkmatic Advertising, who specializes in web design, search engine optimization, graphic design, and influence marketing. Uh, heavy on the influence marketing there. Howie, welcome back to the show. Guilty as charged. Thank you, Mark. Always a pleasure to have you in the show. I, so our Wednesday network group, the lunch that we have in Iman, I know you're there too, but it's like a laugh fest. We have so much fun there. And Howie, you always do the educational moment Right, which is fantastic. Thank you, man. You record it. My, my, my secret there is uh, I, I talk about things I want to learn more about. Yeah. Well, and you can tell that you enjoy what you're talking about. You're not just going through the motions. So anyway, always a pleasure. Also in studio with us today is Heather Bame, a certified business coach that works with business owners to gain clarity in business and achieve their goals. Heather, welcome back to the show. Always glad to be here today. I'm adding the, the female voice to the episode. So I'm the only one. All right. <laughs> well, that's good. I don't, I don't have a female voice. I identify as a male voice. All right. <laughs> All right, so a quick reminder for our listeners, you can catch video and podcast versions of the show anytime by visiting our website at satalkradio.com. And if you're a business owner in the San Antonio area and would like to have your company featured on the show and talk about what you do, why you do it, and what makes you awesome at it, visit our website at satalkradio.com or call our office at 210-960-8210. That's 210-960-8210. All right. So, so, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you know, while we're talking about intro, we didn't talk about your business at all, Mark, but I know you've been seeing a lot of success in helping small businesses and regular sized businesses hire VA assistants. How's that going? It's a really good fact. I'm in the process of hiring two right now and then uh, probably at least one more midweek and then one probably at the end of the week. Um, I like to launch them on Sunday nights, which is actually Monday morning in the Philippines. And that's where I outsource out of great folks. I have a lot of fun doing it. And the leverage that you can get, you know what I mean? Really helps us uh, small budding entrepreneurs. And Imad, I know you, you know what I'm talking about when it comes to leveraging, but doing it in a marketed competitive way, right? Yeah. Is there a specific position that you find yourself hiring for pretty often? So the number one thing that I get requests for, and actually where I started is when it comes to organizing the administrative tasks that I got to do throughout the day that really just kind of suck the life out of you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just really not my game. I'm more of the sales, marketing, networking, you know, have a good time kind of a, that's why I have so much fun at my network lunches, but getting bogged down in the administrative tasks is really what kind of sucks the life out of what my otherwise joyful day would be. So, uh, but yeah, that's the big thing. Uh, But also tasks that you don't want to do like i don't want to cold call how you want to cold call no no you want to go out and meet people right i do i want to meet people in person i'm not even good at the administrative stuff but yet i do it but i also saddle my office staff with doing things that it's not in their their high payoff activity (laughs) range and i have them doing my stuff so i call it uh, serving howie day i call i go here are the 17 things i need today yeah (laughs) and then they split them up well, and it makes us more effective in what we're doing, and it ultimately makes everything more effective in the business. It gets where you want to go faster, which is awesome and amazing, and it's a lot of fun. I right. love the hiring process. Yeah, so the, the idea here is that you want to delegate, not abdicate. Yep. You know, abdicate is you give it out, and you don't really care about the outcome, but if you do it right, you delegate it to somebody that you can follow up with and know that it's getting done. Yeah, in our last podcast, we talked a little bit about leadership, you know, with uh, Eddie, And, you know, if you're a good leader, if you exhibit those qualities, they're going to come out in everything that you do and certainly hiring employees and delegating tasks, not advocating, but delegating tasks um, and staying well connected with your folks. But you have to, all that takes time 
to do. Yeah, the time of implementation with this stuff, I feel like, is one of the reasons people don't do it. They're like, oh, I have to train somebody. I have to figure it out. But even if, you know, you delegate something and you get it back and you check it and it's 60 percent right, that's still only 40 percent that you had to fix or correct or train. And then that person, if you're pouring into them, they're going to get better every time until you check it. And it's really just a cursory. I'm keeping a finger on my business kind of a situation instead of having to go and redo their work. Yeah, that's definitely a topic I can talk all day on is, uh, you know, hiring VAs yeah. just because it's so powerful. Well, and I know there's not group therapy, but my problem is being a control freak. I hate giving things away. You know, when I'm, I micromanage everything and I've been doing that for 35 years and 24 businesses. So, so I would say yeah. you have trust issues, Howie. I do. Well, I would <laughs> ask 35 years and 24 businesses. How have you overcome that? No, I haven't. I have, uh, I have 18,000 <laughs> 18, unread emails. People tell me, oh, I sent you an email. How do you even do business without checking emails? I'm like, well, my office checks emails for the particular client that we're doing work for. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you want to send me a birthday party invitation, don't send it to my email. Call mm -hmm. me or text me. Well, yeah. big thing, too, is, is systems also. Like mm -hmm. uh, how he was saying, you know, you got to trust people as well. But if you have a system of being able to check, it'll also make sure that those items are being taken care of, whether, you know, you want to trust it as much or not. Yeah, good point. We had a, a, I had a Green Beret a coach, not a business coach, but a physical training coach. And he came in and gave my team a couple of pep talks and talked about SOP, standard operating procedures for the business and checkpoints. So for Sharkmatic, that works very well. But, you know, I've been told I'm untrainable or uncoachable. <laughs> so for me, it, that's what I'm, I'm the uh, definitely the bottleneck in the, the system. Well, yeah, you're the exception that makes a rule, right? <laughs> I, I feel like, like systems are something people like, ugh, they kind of shy away from because it sounds Sounds bad. Like system operating procedures, almost right. everyone I talk to about those, because I love them. I'm a systems and processes nerd. They're like, ugh. But if you take a step back and you're like, well, I have kind of a system for doing everything, unless you're just flying by the seat of your pants with everything you do, which most of us aren't. We figure out a way to do things and we do it over and over and over again. And the only difference is right. writing it down. And it takes that mental load off. It's like, this will come up. And instead of figuring out how to handle it, I know exactly how to handle it. And that's huge for everyone. Even, you know, you've got those systems. They just live here, I think, in your head right. instead of written down in a document. The, but you have to be replaceable. I mean, ultimately, we're running a business, right? Not a job. So we have to be able to step away from what we're doing. And that may not be feasible right away. But, I mean, at some point, it needs to be feasible. In due time, yeah. Especially with the, like, you write your tasks down, like you said. You record all the steps that you take. You then can become replaceable. Well, to your point, Mark, that's precisely why we hired Emod of Simply Bookkeeping because yeah. we were handling all of our bookkeeping functions in-house. But the person or the people that we've had over the years in-house also had other duties and responsibilities. So we'd take them off of one thing, do something else, etc. And part of um, outsourcing also means that we focus on what we're experts at, which is marketing, and let somebody else take care of finances, let somebody else take care of legal, etc. Well, and that's where relationships come in because we see Iman all the time. Iman handles my bookkeeping as well. And it's like, you know, it's, it's, I trust him. You know what I mean? We have access to him. We don't have to blindly trust, right? I mean, I have access to him. But By let's, way, you're gonna, I'll tell you one, one other quick thing. Mm -hmm. It's an unintended benefit and, uh, that, that we didn't think about is that as I've been referring Iman to my clients, those clients that he's doing the bookkeeping for now pay us sooner. Yeah. Because <laughs> now I have an inside road to him. I'm like, hey, can you get him to sign that? Yeah. Uh, a road ACH to efficiency, <laughs> right? The road to efficiency. He's like, he's like my spy plant them and all my clients that owe me money. Oh, I like that. <laughs> all right. Let's get to the first segment here. First up on the show is Imad Gurgis, the owner of Simply Bookkeeping, who specializes in bookkeeping and financial analysis for businesses. Imad, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Mark. Always a pleasure. We had a long intro. I, I kind of like that, though. Yeah, we got more it. control over things now. A that bit we're more discussion based and less. Yeah, moving to it. Less system based. Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we're flying we by the seat of our pants that. here, and I like it. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, really to, to Howie's point in a, in a way, um, where are businesses really kind of messing up on their bookkeeping? I mean, because we, we're doing it ourselves and we're not going to be comprehensive on it. It's just no way to do that unless we're bookkeepers to begin with. Um, but where do you see people falling through on, on this type of stuff? So, you know, Mark, that's a great question. Um, 
business owners, they, they start to get into business. And as you know, they wear a lot of hats, right? And that's okay at first, but eventually as the business grows, mm -hmm. then it's time to, like, as we're talking about, start delegating some items. Two, two really important parts are your bookkeeping and your marketing, because no business owner, unless they're a marketing firm, actually want to do their marketing because they're one, probably not efficient at it or want to do their bookkeeping either because it takes a lot of time. Which is easy to do when you're just like, okay, you got a couple of customers, you know what I mean? But when you start getting some customers, even my wife, so my wife was very hesitant on bringing on a bookkeeper. She's like, I can do this myself, right? And I'm like, all right, fine. Well, it's just, well, I'm, we're going to keep him on around and Jennifer's doing her stuff. But now she's like, okay, it's getting a little bit big for me. You know what I mean? And especially getting into a multiple company situation, which I know we're headed towards. It's like, I'm right around the corner from adding a second company exactly. um, that it's, it becomes a lot more difficult. And understanding, I mean, sometimes it just makes more sense. A lot of business owners that own multiple companies, they say, you know, one company's legible, uh, eligible for uh, a loan that the other company needs. How do I transfer money? How do we move it around? So unless you really have a uh, one bookkeeper to manage all your assets and all your companies, things start to get out of hand real fast. And yeah. then you lose track of everything. I was starting to get stressed out there when you just were going through that <laughs> description. I think <laughs> one of the most powerful things in business is having someone that you can go to for the answers instead of having yes. to figure it out yourself down the Google rabbit hole. And then we right. just talked about it with Keaton. You know, you can't really <laughs> go off of everything you find on Google because it may not be reliable. So having one person to call to answer your questions about your finances. I mean, that's huge. How often are your clients reaching out to you and asking you questions like that? I would say at least once a month, at least per client, and per client. Wow. And we try to, uh, me and my team as well, we try to reach out to our clients at least on a weekly basis if there's questions to be asked, but at least once a month, we're always in communication. And that also, you know, helps keep the relationship healthy as well. Let them know, hey, your business is going great. Here's some things you got to look out for. And so it kind of keeps them in the know. How are you handling growth? Because I know you're growing because it's everybody in how you, I know you know this too. It's like everywhere we go, we're hearing about Imad. It's like right. he's taken over, you know, San Antonio. Mm -hmm. How are you handling the growth? You know, I'm going to use a term here that Heather really likes. And I will tell you it's systems. Ah. Absolutely. <laughs> systems. We write it down. Everyone knows their role. A uh, new client comes in, they know A, B, C, and D. Here's what we take care of. It's it, it's almost all automated, but everyone knows their role. Right, right. Automated, not as an AI, but as in personal service and systems, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Onboarding, it's important. We, ha we have a system also uh, for onboarding clients, and, and you're right. And and you know what? So far, of all the people I referred to, Ima, they've all said, oh, my God, he's great. And kind of like you, Mark, somebody at their company was hesitant to hire him. One of my clients, big, big company, had a bookkeeper in-house for about 20 years. And uh, she took early retirement <laughs> uh, <laughs> because Imad replaced her. So, And it helps from keeping things getting missed, right? Especially as you're mentioning, as a speed of growth starts to increase, you want to make sure that quality still stays strong and that nothing is missed. So that's, that's a big point of it as well. All right, you better be keeping an eye on my finances. I was going to say, if you're right. building everything based off of systems and everybody's doing these systems the same way, how easy does that make to track what you guys are doing? Extremely easy. And it is very efficient that the whole team knows exactly what's going on. So if for any reason someone needs help or we bring someone new, it's not necessarily that I have to directly train that new person, but the team also kind of comes in and helps that new person out as well because everything's systematic. That's what I found very helpful with, because I've got 12, uh, just about to be 14 virtual assistants on my team. And we have an internal training process now where virtual assistants training other virtual assistants. It's a good system. And then we have oversight. So that's another thing too, is do, do you, I imagine you're probably the person, maybe, I don't know, that is doing the auditing is not the right word, but it's kind of an auditing or so keeping an eye on on the shop to make sure that things are being done the right way. Who is that in your organization? Exactly. Great question. So we do have a project manager. So every project manager uh, looks over the team, has a certain number of team members that they manage, and they're constantly making sure that that's where their quality control is yep. being taken care of. And if anything, for any reason, comes to me, then I know that, okay, this is something that's probably pretty urgent because it just went through two filters of people just to get to me. What's your growth strategy then? Uh, so switch gears just a little bit. 
What, how are you, I know you're networking, right? but how are your customer acquisition, is it accelerating or no? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And how are you accelerating it? From within, but also a big portion of it is marketing, which I know we'll touch up on that here in about a second. <laughs> but uh, marketing is a big part, especially in the beginning. It's okay. You know, referrals, uh, build your business is great, but then you've got to have a more, uh, a better approach for consistent growth. And that's, that's always going to be through marketing. Okay. So what's Howie doing for you? You keep pointing to Howie. Well, what Howie, are you doing for him? <laughs> you're not doing for me, Howie. <laughs> <laughs> Howie actually man- helps us manage uh, our, uh, our websites, make sure that uh, our leads, our SEOs that were being found on Google, Yelp, all the other so, uh, uh, websites that were out there, uh, and making sure that everything's kind of monitored so that there's no bad reviews being put out there, mm-hmm. uh, everything's uh, controlled, and that everything's up to date. Yeah, you want to capture all your listings. You know, Yelp, Manta being all the ones that you think are not important but still come up on searches. You want to claim them. So we claim them on our client's behalf. That way somebody else doesn't claim them or they don't stay unclaimed. And then once they're claimed, you can monitor them. And if somebody puts up some kind of review, some competitor that's mad because he must be growing too fast and he's getting too many clients. Yeah. They, I think that's review, then we can look at that. That's an interesting, I mean, we're kind of seeing it on a non-business standard through Twitter right now with all those blue check marks, all these random people are going in and they're stealing Well, now now they've been eliminated. What do you mean? So um, Elon Musk said that they were going to do away with those blue check marks. They were selling them for a while. Twitter was using it as a (laughs) revenue. It was $8 a month for a blue check mark. You know, but you know, look. I think he's just trolling people. Yeah, he's getting them all. Met, he's getting them all upset. I don't know. Right. Well, you know, when when you have that kind of money, they're like the whales and that they call the casino, the big gamblers. When you have super deep pockets, it almost doesn't matter. You know, at some point, that company Twitter is going to be worth more than he paid for it, and and then he'll make money just because it's right now such a mess. But there's a lot of attention. So there's a phrase in in public relations that says, "I don't care what you say about me as long as you spell my name correctly." Yeah. And so. No, wow. no publicity, even bad publicity is good publicity. So, all right, just, Imad, so, um, what else you got going on over at bookkeeping? I know we just finished up tax season. Yeah, so absolutely. what's like f- for, uh, first on next up to bat, I guess. You yeah. Know. So the next part now, now that everyone's gotten the whole tax, uh, debacle over, uh, now, now's the growth stage. So now's when we really start helping clients. Okay. So now between, um, May and the end of the year, December, Now's when you want to focus in, okay, what are your selling strategies? What, what's making you your best on, like, what are your ROIs? Where are your strongest selling products, uh, services, and then vice versa? Where are your expenses going to? Is it making sense? Can we delegate things out? How can we make your business more efficient? So we like to do those analytics on the business itself just to kind of see how we can also help them be able to grow as well. That's also a massive, um, uh, thing that really helps business owners. So you're turning this machine on for your clients. Now you're, you're doing those analytics now, or you're just doing the reporting to explain that. So are you preparing reports for your clients now so that they can take a look at that data? Right. So it's- reports are always given out regardless of the month. So every single month, each uh, business owner, they get their reports so that they understand on their own uh, what's going on within their business. Where are their expenses going? Where are their profits coming from? Uh, that's really important, especially as you grow as a business, you start implementing point of sale systems. And so you have to, you want to make sure, okay, where are your sales coming from and how is it helping my business? Um, but as we kind of go through, some businesses have slower stages, some have faster stages or hot seasons. It's really important to understand, okay, how are we going to target the slow seasons for it to make sense in my business and not slow cash flow or production. Yeah, we gotta have the data in order to make good decisions. Yeah, I think just having that clarity of once you've been in business a while, I feel like the first few years of a business are hustle. You just hustle for everything that you get. You make as much money as you can. And when you get to the point where you're making money, you have to stop and look at it and say, where am I making money the most efficiently and where do I need to focus my time and activity? Yeah, and whose butt do you need to kiss? Because I always look at my <laughs> top 10 revenue clients. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, if I have some tickets to the Spurs or something else, guess who gets them? Yeah. Top 10 clients. 80, 20 rule. Yeah, yeah if all of your right. clients were like your favorite clients, what would your business and life be like? That is an excellent point because we also use that 
to create marketing strategies because we say, what would an ideal client look like? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we do that by profiling the current clients that they have that our customers say are their best clients. And then we go out and market to try to find clients like those for them. Well, so how are you doing that? I mean, what do you have somebody that does that for you? Do you do yourself? We all work on it at the office, but it's, it's really most of the formulation of the strategy comes from my brain because I've been in marketing mm -hmm. for 35 years. I was trained by the best. I worked for Procter and Gamble and consumer products marketing after getting a marketing degree from business, from UT business school. And then I worked for an international ad agency for a couple of years working on only multinational clients. And then, you know, I was in my mid twenties and I knew everything. So then I decided to become self unemployed after that. I thought you knew everything at 16. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going through with my daughter. Where is she at? <laughs> All right, Imad, if folks want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Absolutely. Best way is to call either myself or one of our team members at 832-518-9368. Again, that's 832-518-9368. Or you can check out our website at simplybookkeeping.com. And again, that's simply with an I, not a Y. Thanks, Mark. Awesome. Thanks, Imad. Always a pleasure, sir. All right, so... Howie, since you talk so much in Imad's segment, Imad's going to have a big portion of your segment. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we're going to hammer it. Let me, let, me, let me cut the mic off. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, uh, Howie uh, Nestel. So, next up on the show is Howie Nestel with Sharkmatic uh, Advertising. Your business has been around for a long time? For more than three decades, but it wasn't always called Sharkmatic. Yeah. I, I did what I, told, what I told clients not to do. Don't mess with your branding. Don't change the company name. And I, I, I've changed our company name at least six times. And the last time when it became Sharkmatic.com or Sharkmatic Advertising, I was in New York meeting with a production company called Dogmatic. And I was like, ah. God, this is such a cool <laughs> name, Dogmatic. You all own Dogmatic Inc.? Yeah, we do. I was like, oh, great. So I was looking it up and everything. Man, I'm leaving there. I said, okay, you know, I call my staff on the way out. I go, hey, we're changing our company name to Sharkmatic because <laughs> I looked up the domain names available. What does that mean? I go, I don't know. We'll figure it out later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now that you've had time to figure it out, what does it mean? Um, it's like a chop -a -matic. You throw in raw ideas and it comes out finished marketing piece, like a, like a chop -a -matic. You throw in raw ingredients, it comes out salsa. Mm. The, a Sharkmatic, and if you look at our logo, it has opposing shark fins. So we throw in client ideas. So Imad, Simply Bookkeeping, they come with their old website and he's got all these ideas of what he would like. Then my staff jumps in with their ideas and then I have my ideas and we throw them into the Sharkmatic and then we end up with a revised uh, website, branding, social, that kind of stuff. Well, I like it. I don't idea. want to be a wet blanket here, but I don't think that's how sharks work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anything good comes well, out of that. You said this was a PG show, so I'm this, keeping it. That's now it. I kept it clean. Cast, I kept yeah. it clean. <laughs> no, well, we help our clients dominate like sharks dominate the ocean. I like that. That's, that's ultimately what we want to do. But we don't, we don't lead with that. But, man, I get very aggressive with our clients. I want my clients to dominate their industry. So we do, you do a search for organic wording of what my clients do and if they're not coming up on the first page of google it it, it gets me a little bit upset and i, I want to do what it takes to get them ranking on so on uh, on google searches i like that i always say when i work with someone i want them as like passionate about doing what i want as i am you know i want them to really go after it so what i think is interesting about marketing is i feel like a lot of people from outside of the industry come into it and they're like, oh, it's just marketing, you know, I'll throw it up on Google, put them some right. Facebook ads and they think that's going to do it. What are some of the nuances from your multiple years of experience that would contest that? Yeah. Uh, usually what's free doesn't work. And if it does work, it only works for a certain amount of time. And when the platform realizes that it's working for clients, they start charging. So if there's a platform that's been free for a long time, it's because it doesn't convert. And if it doesn't convert, you shouldn't be doing it. And if you want to do it to have a me too thing, just then go ahead and put it up there. But if you think that all your marketing that is free is going to convert and help you grow your business, um, that's one thing that in 30 plus years I've re realized is it's not going to happen. 
It's just not going to happen. So we have clients that get these free website builders before they can, became clients. They build their site. They say, oh, it's a beautiful site. I said, yeah, let's look at your analytics. You know, six unique visitors a month. You know, it's like winking at somebody in the dark. You know what you're doing, but nobody else does. So it doesn't matter how good the site looks. If nobody's seeing it and it's not converting and nobody's calling you from it, then it's not working. And well, even free, you wasted time doing it, which the, costs you money. The big question, though, is... Uh, you know, it for, for me as a business owner, because I have a website that probably nobody's seen, right? And it's like, you're on my list, absolutely on my list to reach out to, if you'll take me as a client, because I know you only take so many of certain categories, but hopefully virtual assistants and right. podcasts you would yeah. take. But, and, and it's me. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> is that, hey, the, what does that really mean? If I dump, say, $2,000 a month into the everything that would, and I don't even know what those numbers are, but let's just say that's what the number is. How do I get that back out uh, of the website and that's where I would get stuck. But since I've known you, I've had a little bit more clarity on how you, it's about customer acquisition, you know, setting up a, basically what amounts to a funnel. You, those, I don't think you use those words in my presence, but right. certainly you're setting I don't up a use funnel. Them. I don't use them and I use them. I don't use them for, for specific reasons. Uh, one, it's a ploy and I'm not saying the funnels don't work, but it's a, it's a marketing ploy to get people duped in a way that they end up on a landing page and then they're funneled into a purchase decision without initially knowing who the client is or what they're what they're going what rabbit hole they're going down before they. But I'm I'm more of an organic marketer, which means that. And by the way, um, if you want to give us two thousand dollars a month, we're available right now. We'll hire you. <laughs> most of our, I don't know most what it of our clients, Most of our clients are spending three hundred and fifty to five hundred bucks a month on organic search. And quite simply, you know, I'll give you some examples. If you look up Tires and Wheels San Antonio, Gill's Tire and Wheel comes up on the first page. Uh, they're competitors, and I hope they're not listening. NTB, Discount Tire, these kind of companies. Big companies. They don't, they don't, op, they don't optimize in Spanish. So if you look up Yantas y Rines San Antonio, uh -huh. Gill's comes out two or three times on the first page of Google. That turns into one client that pays for itself for the next four or five months of SEO. And he's getting three to five clients a day. They're getting about 4,000 unique visitors a month. So if you don't think that's converting, then, you know, definitely go build a website on GoDaddy for free. <laughs> yeah, I, it's really been kind of eye-opening being being in your circle a bit and hearing these kinds of things. Because I, the way I learn is I go to YouTube and try. And it's a place to go and get confused when you talk about SEO and all this stuff because everybody has a plan and a strategy, right? But uh, it's... It's kind of cool being around an expert. Yeah. You know, I mean, and look, there's clients that have known this for years. So Washtub's been our client for a long time, more than 10 years. Cooper's Barbecue across Texas. Uh, before they became clients, they had one website. Now they have seven locations around Texas and we have seven websites, one for each location around Texas. They each have their own optimization. They each have their own social media, et cetera. And you know, it makes sense because if you're in New Braunfels and you pull up a website and it defaults to the, the you know, the Fort Worth location, and it confuses the consumer. They're not in Fort Worth. They're like, they wonder why they're there and then they jump off to something else. But if you're in New Braunfels or in San Antonio and you Google barbecue and Cooper's barbecue comes yeah. up in New Braunfels and you know it's only a 22 minute drive, you're gonna do it. But if it's a five and a half hour drive to Fort Worth, <laughs> you're not gonna do it. So there's a lot of nuances and things like that that I don't know that anybody's gonna be in business long enough to figure out everything there is in marketing. I don't know everything there is in marketing. That's why I hire people that are in their 20s. My most senior staff have been with me for 12 years and they're only in their early 30s. And they're still learning stuff from the 20 something year olds that come into the company, you know? And uh, we do it all in house. I don't outsource. We've had previous designers that still freelance for us, but they, they were part of the Sharkmatic crew. So they know how we work. We have kind of a signature approach to how we do things. Now it's, you know, 1500 clients later and we have uh, about 450 active clients that we manage our marketing for. And so we're starting to figure this thing out, Mark, after <laughs> 35 years, right, well, three decades. And that's the thing. It shifts so fast with the way the, the internet works and the world is changing. And it's kind of like, you're going to have to pay to play. You either pay in your time to dig down, figure out what marketing strategy, what bookkeeping strategy works for you, or you can be efficient with your time and money and pay an expert who their only job is to actually figure this out and do it at a high yeah, level. That's right. So, you know, while while Imad is in growth mode, we're in right-sizing mode. And you'll love this mm -hmm. as a business coach. So 
I, you know, I had been in growth mode plenty of times in the past and I've owned other companies and grew them, sold them. Some of them, you know, got out of them. You know, they just weren't profitable, whatever it was. But what I'm doing now with our marketing is I do a lot of network marketing, of course, but I also market ourselves to get those right clients, those ideal clients. And as I get more of those right clients, I kind of shed the ones that are not right clients that have been around for a long time. They don't like to spend. They like to complain. They're not, you know, they're, they're, they're not helpful in the overall process of marketing. I need a, I need a partner. I'm on the same side of the table as my clients are. And so I don't need an antagonistic relationship. I certainly don't need to work for the money. So even if people, somebody comes to me with money and they're not an ideal client for me, I, would, I won't take them on. I want to make sure, one, that I can get results from them. Two, that I actually like spending time with them and talking to them because my clients either are friends or become friends. And then I take that to the next level, which is I get them involved with nonprofit. Just today, I've done more nonprofit stuff before noon than I have doing for-profit stuff from my company because I'm, I'm, I've been over the past you know couple of decades uh, on this long transition from career to calling. And so when I help my nonprofits and I get so much out of that and the nonprofits get so much out of that, I also want to bring my clients along with it. So I get them involved with nonprofits. We had a dozen and a half of them sponsor this big event on Saturday. I have stuff coming up, galas, and, and it's all connected. And then, again, speaking of unintended consequences, well, guess what? That, that solidifies and, and strengthens our relationship. Because if a competitor comes in and says, oh, I could do your SEO better than Howie and Sharkmatic. Well, I, I'm so connected with my clients because I've gotten them involved with nonprofits and with other stuff. And they become friends that they're highly unlikely to leave me because of that well, so relationship. We Imad, have. you're one of Howie's customers. So yep. when you started, how long ago did you start using them? About four and a half months ago. Okay, so when that process, and I'm, I'm putting you on the spot on purpose yeah, here, yeah, but absolutely. so how was that process of the, you know, how he kind of bringing you into that fold and then, you know, building out your stuff? How was that? It, it, it's actually been great. It's been good for, like you said, on a, in a, on a friend basis, relationship, but also on a business basis as well, because not only am I able to help him, but he's also able to help us. As you mentioned, we're in growth, growth mode, and any time a business is in growth mode, it's very important to understand that you should not stop marketing regardless of right. if you're growing or if you're not growing. It's always to continue marketing because it's consistency. And so uh, even by doing that, we've been introduced to a lot of great folks, whether, yes, they've converted into a business as well or whether it's nonprofits, which we all love to give back into society, just as society has helped us as well. And so by giving back as well, it also helps us grow as a person, grow as a business and grow uh, our our uh, environment as well. How we were about out of time, but I wanted to ask you about your uh, howingestell.com. You do some speaking stuff. Tell me a little bit about that. Right. I do public speaking, and the model that I've adopted is the Google model, which is I do everything for free, and then one day I'll become a billionaire from public <laughs> speaking. So I, I think that is a good one. I got, yeah, I got the first half of it down, doing it all for free. <laughs> now, I, I actually have been paid a few times for public speaking. I love doing it. And then when it's part of a nonprofit, then I get to donate back my, my speaker fees. And like you said, you know, you, you, you get the honor and privilege of listening to me every single Wednesday mm -hmm. at my people referral group. But, um, but it's kind of hard to say something in meaningful in two minutes or less. So I prefer a one hour talk. I, I did an event for a convocation for a school system uh, two years ago and I had they said it was a 90 minute talk and I had 15 pages of notes and the guy that introduced me was a superintendent and he said something about a personal interaction that he and I had which kind of launched me into a talk well make a long story short I never even looked at my notes for an <laughs> hour and a half but thank god I looked at my watch right I'm like oh <laughs> we're just about out of time so thank you so much but I love that so I put the, some of my talks on howienestel.com h-o-w-i-e-n-e-s-t-e-l.com and I don't travel for speaking I've been offered to travel but I don't do it because I still have three kids in uh, middle school and high school and so I don't want to be that dad that's always gone but maybe that's what I'll do when I retire, when my last kid gets out of hit the circuit, school. write a book and hit us, hit the circuit. Yeah. But, uh, 
to kind of button up the thing about marketing and clients and growth mode or not and networking, I would say the time to look for clients is when you don't need any. Right. Because if you wait to need clients and then try to figure out what marketing is going to work and what networking can do, it's usually too late. So even us right before the pandemic, I mean, we'd always we market our own business and uh, the beginning of the pandemic, first 90 days, uh, 40 percent of our business disappeared because clients didn't have money. They were closing over this or that. And so we already had marketing in place and were able to shift and still have a profitable year in 2020. Yeah, I think you just never know when you're going to have that crazy shift in the market or something's going to happen and people have to leave you. It's not that they want to. It's not that you did a bad job. It's exactly. just sometimes they yep. have to leave you. Yeah, 2008, Y2K, tech bubble burst, housing bubble burst. <laughs> not every decade we've got something nasty oh, yeah. that comes up. As I told Mark the other day, welcome to entrepreneurship. Yeah. Well, there's a saying, one of my favorites is, it's not the direction of the wind that determines where you're going to end up. It's the set of the sail. Mm-hmm. So there's always going to be change and things coming at you and you have to adjust. You have to pivot. It's like me getting kicked off the radio. I pivoted to podcast and we're doing better now than we were before. Yeah, immediately. And I think, you know, to, to speak on that nonprofit piece, if you've got kind of a bigger vision for what you want to do with the vehicle of your business, your company, your entrepreneurship itself, that's what can help you sail through those pivots and really help you keep going when the chips are down. I mean, that's huge to be able to step out of, I have to make money and I have to survive and just be able to say, I, I have established this, so now I can pour into what what I really love to do. And you end up seeing, I feel like on the most part, more success than you would have thought. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, I know you got to, you're going to probably have to cut off my mic, but yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, Graham Weston, right Mute. <laughs> Graham Weston, Bill Greehy, uh, Harvey Nasium, these are all local billionaire philanthropists. I would have never met them by having a little web design no. firm. I met them all through nonprofit stuff. Mm-hmm. And I've gotten them involved with, these philanthropic things that I'm doing. And if it happens to turn into a little business, uh, you know, I don't say no. Well, a big part of business is having fun. I'm telling you, it's, it, you can't go through life just eating steak. I mean, you, you have to have cheesecake on occasion. One of my favorite questions to ask is if you got hit by a bus tomorrow, would you be okay with what you're doing right now? And if the answer is no, then even even if what you're doing is profitable, maybe we need to shift your activities because it's no, there's no point in it. Well, and who's going to show up to your funeral? Yeah. I mean, I know that, I mean, Howie's funeral would be full because he touches so many people in a positive way. Brought to you by Mark hey. <laughs> you know what? Let me, let me put you down as one of the speakers to deliver a eulogy. <laughs> I have about 20 people. All right, Howie, if people want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Sharkmatic.com, S-H-A-R-K-M-A-T-I-C.com. They can call my office, 210-375-QUADOT. If you're from the country, if you're not, it's 375-0000. All right, and I'll, let me initiate a challenge out there. Go Google Howie Nestel and, and uh, let me know what you guys come up with. All right, as we wrap up the show, quick uh, reminder to check out our latest podcast and catch video version of the show anytime by visiting our website at satalkradio.com. That's going to be it for us. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you on the next one. Awesome. Thanks, Mark.